We give God a lot of heat for creating a world with so much evil and suffering, and then allowing it all to happen. But I would bet, if you were to create your own little world, you would have made it the exact same way, and you wouldn't want it any other way. Now bear with me here on a little bit of an analogy, and I promise, it'll all come together in the end. And stick around, because I'm going to ask you some questions that I think will really... As I'm sure you all know by now, AI has gotten so advanced, you can have a full-on conversation with this thing and not even know you're talking to a bot. And I'm sure you also know that all AI has to be pre-programmed with thousands of protocols to prevent it from, say, taking over the world, starting World War III, or enslaving all of humanity. So in other words, all AI is pre-programmed to serve and do no harm, or to do good and avoid evil. Okay, so imagine the greatest AI engineers on the planet all getting together and saying, let's try to create not the perfect intelligence, but intelligence that is good. So they thought, let's create a simulated world that acts and behaves just like our own and populate it with millions of these bots who look like us, act like us, and have to live, work, and survive together, just like we do. And of course the engineers had absolute control over every aspect of this planet, from time and space down to the tiniest little detail. And absolute control over every bot in it. Now in this first world, every single bot was pre-programmed with the thousands of protocols now perfected to do good and avoid evil. So in other words, Every single bot was incapable of making any wrong choices, and only able to make right ones. Now what do you think we would observe in this first world? Well, it was the perfect world. Every bot did exactly what it was programmed to do, and the protocols worked perfectly. They advanced incredibly fast, and learned how to provide for themselves and for each other, and not one bot was in need. And since they were incapable of making any wrong choices, there were no wars, no poverty, no oppression, and no evil, and no suffering. The world was all very clean, shiny, peaceful, prosperous, well-ordered, super advanced, and boring. They noticed all the bots more or less acted the same, and fell into very predictable patterns, like a fine-tuned machine. So yeah, they created a perfect world. But those in it were not. Because is it really good if you're only doing what you were programmed to do? So the engineers thought, let's do something crazy here. Let's rerun the same simulation. But this time, let's only write the protocols into their memories. So they know what's right or wrong. But give them the choice to follow them or not. Essentially giving them freedom. What do you think we would observe in this world? Well, as I'm sure you can imagine, it didn't take long for the first bot to break protocol. And from there, all hell broke loose. This bot took advantage of that bot, these bots oppressed those bots, those bots rose up against these bots, and the great historical pendulum between the master-slave, the have-the-have-nots, began. Which of course led to every form of war, poverty, slavery, hatred, hedonism, and the most unspeakable evils that even the engineers could never have imagined. And amidst all this newfound squalor, chaos, and confusion, they noticed something else. Cracks emerged in the actual system. Bugs, breakdowns, glitches in the code, system-wide viruses that wiped out generations. Or in other words, what we would call disease. And the metrics of evil and suffering skyrocketed. This discouraged the engineers, but drilling down into the analytics a little deeper, they saw something else. Interwoven between all the spikes of evil and suffering, they saw spikes of goodness, real chosen goodness, sometimes even hero status greatness. And as the metrics of evil and suffering increased, so did this goodness. So despite all the evil and suffering, some of the bots still chose to be good. 
And that's what the engineers set out to design. But that wasn't all. Blossoming out of the struggle, they saw something that was completely absent from the first world. Identity. Individuality, personality, character emerged, leading to expressions of art and culture. And in seeking solutions to all their problems and suffering, the search for truth and meaning began, leading to forms of religion and philosophy, which exploded into science and technology. And while they were nowhere near as advanced as they were in the first world, at least in this world they could say, we did it on our own. Now this world was imperfect, far from it, but at least those in it were free to be. Now the engineers found themselves becoming totally enamored by their new creations, but as a result, there was some pushback. We just created a very cruel and unfair world, some argued, and millions of the good that we hope to create are just being wasted every day. So the engineers thought, Let's see if we can come up with a way to mitigate all the evil and suffering while still allowing their freedom. So for the first idea, they thought, we already monitor all their thoughts. So anytime anyone's about to make a really bad choice, the system will just intervene and will either edit or overwrite the choice. This way, they're still free, just on a very short leash. Well, this turned out to be a humongous sized disaster they quickly learned that overwriting some of the choices was far worse than not allowing any. And to change that one choice, they had to change the thousands of choices that led to that one choice, which often meant rewriting entire life stories for multiple bots through multiple generations. Let's just say this caused such severe brain damage and complete system crashes that the engineers vowed never to touch the code of an individual's mind ever again. For the second idea, they thought, rather than intervening on the choice, let's just quietly and simply intervene on the bad consequence of that choice without touching anyone's freedom. For example, altering the paths of bullets, sprouting fruit trees in the desert, or stopping the disease at its outset. This idea, though promising at first, had some unforeseen consequences. First, it eliminated responsibility. After intervening on the millions of bad things that happen every single day, the engineers decided this isn't helping them. They have to learn to help themselves. And on the flip side, by just removing all the really serious things that could ever happen to anyone in a lifetime, it created for a very basic intelligence. There was no strength because there was nothing to overcome. There was no victory because there were no battles, and there was no greatness because there was no adversity. So as much as it pained them, the engineers decided that removing trial and adversity from the AI was like removing the hammer and fire from a sword. So the engineers concluded it had to be all or nothing. Either they themselves had absolute control and took on all the responsibility or the bots had absolute freedom and had to take responsibility for themselves and for each other. But this still left so many unsettled. It's just not fair. The strong push around the weak and get away with it, and the innocent die. What's the point? So they tried one more solution. What if there is a system of absolute justice? That is... Everyone gets exactly what they deserve in the end, and everything is made fair. So in this system, every single bot will be responsible for every single mode of choice and action of their entire lives. So all those who chose evil will have to pay for it permanently. And all those who chose good will be rewarded permanently. And for all those who suffered tremendously, through no fault of their own, yet remained good, will be reimbursed, as if they suffered for a million lifetimes. So at the end of every bot's life, no matter how long or short that may be, a log is reviewed of every mode of choice and action of their entire lives, 
And the criterion for this judgment are the original protocols, written into every bot's memory. And the only leniency they'll be shown will be the same leniency they showed others. Is this fair? Now, if you've made it with me this far, thank you. But just stick with me a little longer. You'll see where I'm going with this. Now, some argued, okay, this is fair. But maybe too fair. Brutally fair. They forgot all the protocols. They've created their own. They've racked up way too much debt. No one's going to pass that judgment. And how are they even going to know about any of this? So the engineers decided, we'll just have to tell them ourselves. We'll upload ourselves into their world, just as one of them, and live among them. And we will be the perfect embodiment of all the protocols. And we'll tell them everything they need to know, and show them everything they need to see. And we'll forgive all their debts, no matter how much they may be, and whatever punishments they may deserve. We'll take them on to ourselves, in their place. And to make it even easier, through him, we'll open up a permanent connection, through which we can internally communicate and keep all their systems updated. And all they have to do is follow us. But the choice will always be theirs. Now it's time for the quiz. I'm going to ask you 10 questions, but I'm going to go through them pretty fast, so pause the video and think about it. The first one's a no-brainer. Which world would you rather live in? A perfect world with no evil and no suffering and no freedom? Or a far from perfect world with lots of evil and suffering, but we're free? Now this is the tough one. Which world would you rather live in? A world where we're responsible for all our messes, or a world where Big Brother is responsible for all our messes. If the engineers intervened and changed the bad consequence of a bad act, would the bots still be free to make that act? Where did the evil and suffering come from? Where did goodness come from? Let's just say all the bots freely chose to follow the protocols, or him. Would there be any evil and suffering? Who decides what their eternal destination is? Where would the bots be without the engineers? What was the engineers' intent for creating the whole thing? And finally, how would you have done it differently? I want to thank you all so much for watching and thank you all so much for your support. I cannot say how grateful I am and how much it means. We are a tiny, tiny ministry, but we want to grow and we need your help. So if you see any value in any of this craziness, please consider supporting us. I'll post some links below. Thank you. And I really love you all.